Hey everyone, welcome back to the channel. Uh, so this is going to be my day one after my rant about the general uh, grooming of the Commonwealth tour. So this is going to be day one, so I'm going to be breaking this down because there was just so much to unpack. It, it was crazy to do this in one video and I'm probably going to still miss things out. So if you want to join me in this video, which is going to be exploring day one, which is the outfits that she wore, the things that I saw, the things that I've heard. So if you want to join me in this video, then it is grab your drink of choice time. So this is where I give you a video of my lovely subscribers that have sent in videos, pictures, etc. of what is their drink of choice. And you can join this by sending your video in to the email that's going across the bottom here now. And it can be of anything. You can be as creative as you like. And I need you to send in these videos because I'm coming to the end. Um, so I've only got, I think, a few more uh, that... Uh, that I can use and then I've got some pictures which I'm going to do a collage of pictures but as far as videos go I've only got a few left so please please send in your videos don't be shy you can use your fur babies you can use your family um, you can use just yeah whatever it is you know you don't have to be on camera you can just do a voiceover um, whatever it is um, send send them in because all of you enjoy watching them then you don't have to listen to me saying it every single time. So yeah. So anyway, so here's the next one and I hope you enjoy and I'll see you in a minute. So I'm in Tenerife on holiday, but still keeping up with the bubble family. So grab your drink of choice. You know what they say, it's five o'clock somewhere. So day one, we saw them arrive. And one of the first things I'm going to say is that when they came down the the flight uh the stairs of the plane what we what i noticed and what some other people noticed was the fact that they were greeting the military or the indignitaries with their sunglasses on and i just the, uh, the way i view these two is they just absolutely have no understanding now if i'm going to play fair i can understand that how maybe perhaps Very plausible that she's almost now trying to get the royal family to take the titles. Now I know that some of you may disagree with this, but I feel that those titles have been used now. Um, and she is going to want to level up. A narcissist is never happy and content. They need to level up. She cannot make it in Hollywood. That's categorically clear. Um, and a lot of that is down to the treatment of her father. So she knows that. We, I would imagine that her Orchard Riviera rubbish is going to be stagnant. She'll probably do the odd little thing, but it's going to stay stagnant because, and I'll tell you why, it's because it didn't go anywhere. 
like I've said, she's not even broken a million followers. So that shows her that she's not that well liked in the great scheme of things. When you think of there is less than just under 8 billion people in the world, she couldn't even break a million followers. Um, and like I say, and most of, I'd probably say most of those are journalists, bots, multiple accounts by different people, by the cult squad. Um, so maybe at best she's got about 500,000 people that might like her. It's, it's not gone anywhere. Her podcast, pff, that's that's disappeared. Um, and I think from what I've gathered, the Lemonada are, are struggling to get it off the ground because no one's interested. So this would be absolutely in line with the way that a narcissist would think. And especially um, a malignant narcissist like Megan, who I absolutely th believe falls in the, re the realms of sociopathy and psychopathy. Um, she will have political designs. She's always, if you, if you trace things back, she's always had that little element of herself, which has touched on it. Nothing is going to be good enough for her. So she, she is going to want that. Now, whether she would succeed is a completely different matter, but that doesn't, that doesn't matter to her because in her head, she thinks she can. And if she has got what we might believe is people backing her, then I don't know. We all know that the, the way things are in the world today, it's not how it used to be um, with very shady characters. I'm going to get into that bit later on. So let's stick with day one. So, so they turn up. And like I said, if you haven't seen the video from yesterday, I showed you the clip where they turn up and that young girl goes to, uh, it looks like offer her some food or um, a gift or some or something. It's difficult to see. It looks like food. And instead of just being very courteous or even trying it because it, I felt that it was quite insulting anyway not to, because in all fairness, when you're there, you want to try the food. You want to immerse yourself in the culture. Why would you not? Um, she turns away. And then when she turns away, she sort of then sort of, almost turns back and acts as if this girl doesn't exist you've got harry then briefly speaking to them and then doing a thumbs up who does that um and then you have her then walking away obviously all the cameras are there so there she is because that's what she's interested in the cameras um and Harry then goes to move away and I will put the, the, the footage up as I'm talking so Harry goes to move away and you can see her pull him back um, and his, his, you know, to me, it's like his face changes. Um, and there is definitely coercive control going on there with her. Most definitely. Um, I know that I have said that he's just as bad as her and he is. But I do feel that there is still this element of coercive control that is going on with her, which is why she ended up there in the first place, because this was supposed to be about Invictus. And in all fairness, it wasn't. It wasn't about Invictus at all. So she's there in this peach dress, which is called from the Windsor Collection, and it's oh, retails over a thousand pounds, I believe. So you've got the fact that she's turning up anyway, dripping in money in a, in a sense, and not her money; it'll be donational money, um, or they've given her an amount for a wardrobe or something. It won't, you know, it won't be hers, and and I think that's the most frustrating thing is that they don't do anything to earn this money. You know, when you, at least when you, I mean, whether you like them or not, at least when you look at the Kardashians and, and whether, you know, like I say, whether you like them or not, and I get why people don't, but you can still see that for, for a lot of it, they, maybe not in the beginning, but now they do work. They, they go out, they do things. Um, don't come for me because I'm, that's just how I see it. I mean, there's other aspects to them as well, but that just, at least they're doing something. Harry and Meghan do nothing. They talk a lot, but they do nothing. You know, for the people that kind of go, oh, look at all the things that they're doing with their foundation. That's not their money. That's other people donating. This is what people don't quite grasp, that it's people donating to their charity and they're taking 5% of that and giving the odd little drip here and there just to appease people. It's not their hard earned money. They're not grafting and then going out helping people. So, yeah, so she's wearing this, this dress and I, and, I, and I think this was, like I say, it was, it, to me it was a dig to the royals. It wasn't a nod to the royals, as the mainstream media like to put it. It was a dig to the royals. 
but it was, in my opinion, the most inappropriate dress. And there is something deeply disturbing about a 40-something year old woman who wants to appear attractive to kids. What is up with that? I know narcissists are egotistical, but, you know, these kids look, you know, they were teenagers and then obviously younger. Why on earth would you turn up to a dress that is almost like a semi-naked colour and it's backless and showing side boobage, if, if I'm honest, why on earth would you do that? I mean, I, I understand that they have such an inflated ego that they need to be seen as attractive, but to, to kids. And again, did the media pick up on this? Did the media say anything? No, no. It was, oh, Megan looks amazing in what she's wearing. No, she doesn't. Oh, you know, guys, you know me, guys. I do not attack her personally because in a sense of her, how she looks or until it's warranted and in my opinion this is warranted it was absolutely unequivocally inappropriate for children you and not only that it was it was inappropriate for the country you know this is a woman who says oh you know this is like home to me and I feel like I'm a Nigerian woman um well where's where's the dressing appropriately because I can guarantee you that if William and Catherine had gone to Nigeria and Catherine had worn something like that. Oh my goodness. You can see the headlines. And I think even the mainstream media would have attacked Catherine for dressing in a backless dress with side boobage. But the difference being is Catherine is classy and she wouldn't wear something like that. Um, she's appropriate. She would understand. And so she would, she would be culturally appropriate. And... Megan, as per usual, isn't. She turned everything, in my opinion, about her. This was this this trip was about her. Absolutely, it was not about Invictus. And if I was Invictus, I'd be fuming at this because, to me, what they've basically done is they used Nigeria to get this tour. They've used Nigeria. And Nigeria, unfortunately, will find themselves markled like everybody else that they use. My pro thoughts are that the, that the Nigerians probably thought, given the fact that they have used HRH with Harry and they've let them, they possibly are under the illusion that even though Harry is no longer a working royal, I have a sneaky feeling that behind closed doors, there's been conversations where Harry has said, oh, I know what may look like in the media, but actually me and my father, we're OK. Hence why he tried to get the visit with his father, because there are rumours, and I will say rumours, because allegedly he tried to get his father to say, did, did he want to say anything or give a message to the Nigerian government? And his dad said no. Now, again, I say allegedly. Um... But that does kind of track in the way that Harry is trying to uh, sort of falsely present himself. And I and I do feel that that's why they, they went all out, because I genuinely believe they behind the scenes, they have made it seem that they still have a connection and they've probably promised them things um, that they, they have no position uh, promising them. Because unfortunately, that is what they will do. And then they will plead denial. I never said that. Because again, like I say, the media hasn't called out the fact that Harry has forgotten about the, the Barker people. Where's the outrage for them? Oh, they're quite happy in bringing out their outrage when it's something to do with them and some negative uh, media piece about them. Oh, we're outraged. Um, but where's the outrage for these people that are still going through what they're going through where is where are harry and megan stepping in to help that they're all for the people and then and i'm going to get to the mental health bit in a minute because that's just a laugh that is um but yeah so th there she is like seeking this attention it's all about me um look at what i'm wearing and and it was just a very again a very ill-fitting dress i'm sorry I, I will say that i think that some things might be nice on her but that dress was inappropriate it, it was a naked looking color it was 
to me is something you might wear of an evening not to visit school children and the fact and this is what is so wrong with this world our world is sick our world is really sick in my opinion because when you've got a woman who is behaving this way and then doing this around children and everyone's going yeah well done Megan she's so amazing that is what is wrong with the world no it's not amazing it's inappropriate because like I say, if anyone else had done that, if Catherine had done that, they would have been all over her. I mean, I'm being funny, when they critique her for literally making a few edits to a photograph and, and, and literally create an absolute storm over it, and yet Megan swans in looking like she's just, what well, I won't say where I think she's just rocked off from, but that's what she does look like. And the media say, hmm, nothing. But I will say that some of the faces of those young girls looked unimpressed. Um, there was footage where, and again, when the cameras were rolling, they were doing these ridiculous, goofy dances. And this is why this to me was almost like they were attempting this to look like a royal tour, you know, dancing with these young. And, and I think that that, again, is what I find really disturbing is that they are everything that they do is around kids. They are grooming kids and if people can't see that they need the head read because that is exactly what they're doing they are grooming the younger generation they know deep down the younger generation are the ones that will not vote in a royal family even though to be honest if they don't then they're out anyway but I do believe that at some point they are trying to goad the royal family into removing the titles. Now, maybe not Harry, because Harry probably thinks that that's not what he wants, but I believe she does, because if they remove the title, she becomes Princess What I think she becomes Princess Dumbleton. Dumble, 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 Dumbleton, sorry. Uh, Dumbarton. Ah, oh, sorry, God, Dumbleton. Where did I get that from? Do you know what? I was actually thinking Dumbledore in my head? So I do apologise. Dumbarton, um, I think, or Princess Henry of Dumbarton. Um, but again, but it's the word princess for her because that's what come away from in Nigeria. It's the princess of Nigeria. God, any strength. Um, and then she could be seen as the victim. They've taken the titles from me. I didn't want that. They took them and I'm the victim. But now I can go for my political career because I can't do that with my titles. So she's not going to give them up because if she gives them up to go for a political career, she, she looks conceited. She is conceited, but that is how she will look. She will look manipulative and it will show. But if the titles are taken, then she can go, that's not what I wanted. I didn't want the titles to be taken. I was willing to just, you know, be, a, be the, the people princess. But I can't do that now. <laughs> but that's that's just my thoughts. This woman is so manipulative and calculating. It is unreal. And when you're when you people like us and we're watching this unfold and then the rest of the sheep are, are kind of going, no, Megan, she's lovely. She's you know, she's she's so this, she's so that. And you're just like, oh, wake up, wake up, wake up. Um, so the, yeah, so I, I think that everything has been said about that particular outfit that has been said. Um, and then she went on to wear the white Catherine suit because that's what I call it. Because at the end of the day, yes, I know that she's entitled to wear a suit just because it's white. But again, she's a narcissist. They do not do things without real thought into it. The Windsor dress was a, a, a an attack at the, the royal family the white suit was to Catherine I tell you now I know that some might disagree but I don't believe so because Catherine got a lot of uh real positive comments in regards to her white suit and it's very similar do I think it looked okay on her I think out of everything that she wore that was probably the best outfit if I'm honest because it was more conservative and she was covered up. So yeah, because I know what she's doing and I can see what, what it is. So I do think that that was, yeah, aimed at Catherine. 
and again there was footage where she <laughs> she's so deranged that she walks along just waving madly at people but there was footage where no one was waving back at her at all um and it says and apparently she said it says here that megan who didn't hire a stylist but insisted on dressing herself well in all honesty i feel that that shows because I, I think that that is how Megan is. She doesn't have a stylist because her ego will tell her that she knows herself better than anybody and she knows what to wear. But unfortunately, she doesn't all the time because she has a particular frame, body type, and she does not wear things that are suitable for that. Um, the suit was 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 good. Okay, I will give her that. But everything else, the only the only other outfit that I sort of thought was no actually no there wasn't i was going to say the yellow dress but actually no i no i won't say what i think who who i thought she looked like but, <laughs> but i think it's been said as uh, so, a yeah uh but so her clothing in total was around a hundred and thirty thousand pound just get your head around that for a second a hundred and thirty thousand pound and that's without her jewelry at a country who survives on where under 90 million, I know there's a bigger population, but around 90 million are on are are on the poverty line, and they survive on one pound fifty a day. Not that they got to see those people because this was all orchestrated. They went to the more affluent area of Nigeria, so not you know not the where the poorer people are. We don't want to mix with those people. Um, and like like I say, the staff were not paid. So they're going to be they're going to be reaping the repercussions of this visit for quite some time that I would see. I truly believe that they thought by having them there they would they would have they possibly might get support and help from the royal family. Like I say, I absolutely believe that behind the scenes orchestrating this Harry has probably or Meghan has probably made this look like look, if you invite us and you we're we're part of that, we can get you on the inside. We can get all this stuff for you and it's going to be so financially viable for you and they and the Nigerians and I wouldn't blame them have probably thought this is going to be great for our country and they don't realize that they've just been used by these two because they're not going to give back they'll do the odd little thing and then it'll be nothing or they'll just be used until she doesn't get what she wants and then it's going to be like yeah on to the next thing because it's also come out that some uh, I, I found online that not only is that she said pretty much the same thing. And I'm going to put this up in a minute. The same thing in regards to Malta, where she said Malta was like coming home. Um, so she said the same thing. But I think even further back than that, she was also German. So it's like, pick a lane, lady. Which what? How many homes are you going to have? <laughs> um, so yes, yeah, so I'll put this up here so you can hear this and, uh, and, and then I'll carry on. Coming to Malta has been really important to me because my great-great-grandmother is Maltese and so we've been trying to trace the ancestry. My trip to Malta was mostly about trying to understand where I come from, my identity and my heritage. There is something so lovely about fitting in and being home. Um, and to come somewhere where you so quickly settle in to feeling welcomed home is really special. It's this Maltese hospitality that is really special to the place and me. So now I'm going to go into the mental health word salad that happened. I was few. I, I, I feel like I've spent most of my time fuming about this. Um, I was, as someone who works in this field, this I think this angers me more than anything else because not only are, are they absolutely negligent and irresponsible in a lot of the things that they were talking about they are not qualified to do this and I'm so tired of the fact that that vulnerable people are not being protected these children are not being protected from them because again you have the mainstream media going oh Harry and Meghan are talking about mental health they're not damn qualified to talk about mental health if you do, if you're giving the wrong advice to children, and bearing in mind there, uh, both there was conflicting, um, that's dangerous. This job, you have to train for, 
And it's incredibly important that you train for it because not everyone is up to doing it. Not everyone can do it. You have a responsibility, a huge responsibility. And if you're not careful, you can give it you you can give advice to the point where it can have devastating effects on the person so you have you know and with the way with, with harry he, you know he's either very animated or he's miserable there's almost like no middle ground with harry um so he gives a speech or rather like i say he's adopting megan's word salad about mental health but what he says is everyone has or suffers with mental health well, mental health is is like an, the umbrella in a sense. And underneath that, there are issues regarding mental health. So what Harry perhaps needed to say was, yes, mental health is a massive thing. However, ev not everyone, and it isn't everyone, struggles with mental health issues. We all have mental health, you plum, because mental health is mental health. But not everyone struggles with mental health. And so again, he, and, and, and he sort of, it's like he forgets that he's talking to actual children. Um, and so he says, firstly, like I've said, what gives him the right to speak on mental health when they've given... <laughs> uh, and this is, this is it, isn't it? Look at what they have both done to their families. And you've got two people, you've got one who has single-handedly used her father till he had no more money and he was of no more relevance to her, then orchestrated a paparazzi shoot to somehow then go after him in the media. He comes out defending himself and that's what she uses against him is, oh, you know, my family are awful. They go against me and they, they speak about it publicly and that's just terrible. And other and everyone feels sorry for her. Forgetting the fact that this family has been thrown to the wolves. No one protected them. And I mean, I understand that he was obviously in the Hollywood scene. Suddenly thrust into the public eye. But not only that, in a very negative way. And nobody protects, she didn't put out a statement saying, where's all, when she's so busy defending anything that comes out negative about them, but where was the public statement, do not go after my family, do not go after my father? She wanted all this, these public statements made about herself, but yet said nothing in protection to her own family, her father, who was poorly as well. Where was her getting onto a private jet to go and see him? before the wedding, making sure that even if he couldn't come, that there was a way for him to, to just be present, be part of it, even if it was, you know, he had his own video link to it or, or, or something, that he felt included nothing. Why? Because she'd got what she wanted. She got the next level up. She snagged Harry. She manipulated Harry. And I do think because he's, uh, he, he's able to be manipulated, and she got him. So she no longer needed her father, but she needed Doria because Dory was her, her, her race card ticket. So there sat Doria. So everyone felt sorry for Doria because she was sitting on her own and what a big, bad, awful white family it is. And poor Doria is there on her own. But that again was Megan's choice. No one looked at that as Megan's choice. She could have invited the rest of her family, but she chose not to. Instead, she invited celebrities that she'd never met. Oh, but that was okay. That was okay. And then they both proceeded to then stomp all over their family. Harry is literally turned against his family in the most awful way and to do it publicly. And instead of people going, hang on a minute, let's hold you accountable. And you're also accountable for your own issues, Harry. Stop blaming everybody else. No, they applaud it. Oh, how brave, how brave of Harry, well done. But how brave of Harry that he spoke out about his awful family. Yeah, okay, those people, let me ask you, would you be okay with that if one of your members of the family decided to speak out publicly about everything that has happened in your family and then lie, embellish, attack, berate? Of course you wouldn't. Well, when it's somebody else, it's okay though. 
not thinking for a minute that the royal family are human and how this would have how affect, affect their mental health. Where was the concern for the late queen, her mental health, and Prince Philip, his mental health? Where's the concern? Oh, don't even get me started. Rah! Let me get it started. I've already started. I'll start so I'll finish. <laughs> it, I, I just find it absolutely unbelievable that the, that the mainstream media, instead of going, well, hang on a minute, Harry and Meghan, how can you sit there and talk to strangers about mental health and how important it is to, to, to speak out and to look after yourself? But you, you've literally just attacked your family in the worst way whilst still utilising all the good bits that come with being part of the royal family. I would have more respect for them if they'd have both walked away and gone, you know what, we're handing back our titles, we want nothing to do with the royal family, we're going to go off and we're going to live our private life and do our thing. I may have more respect for them, may. But they didn't. They're like, you know what, we'll keep that, we'll keep that, we'll keep that because that benefits us, but the rest of it, nah, we don't want that. We don't want all the boring stuff. They are basically now doing what they asked the Queen and the Queen said no. They are basically sticking their fingers up and saying, we'll do what we want and you can't stop us. And because the royal family are not doing anything, they are not publicly stating they should have put a statement out. Not the royal commissioner, whoever who was. No, they should have put a statement out saying that Meghan and Harry are in no way representing the royal family. But they didn't. And so now it does look as if, are they? Have they got there okay? Are we not being told everything? Like I say, these two just standing there talking to children about mental health, which is, like I say, an absolute farce given everything that's gone on. Again, like I say, nobody's picking up on that. And then you have Megan, because of course she has to take the microphone, because what I've noticed with Megan is almost like she's got to have the last say. I'm having a hot flush. Do you know, I think it's because I'm getting stressed out. I've noticed that when I get stressed out and go on a rant, I have a hot flush. <laughs> Just give me a minute. <laughs> Just wash my notes about. So yeah. So, <laughs> so then Megan is like, no, I I can't possibly have Harry outdo me. I've got to now have my say. Got to have the last word. Um. I mean, I, I can't even, I had to laugh, I did laugh when she was like, oh, and this is why I married my husband, because he's so smart. If that isn't the underhanded, um, oh, just, it's like she, 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 she's thinking the opposite, but she says that. She, she, honestly, she's so, she is so spiteful. She really is spiteful. Um, but then what she goes on to say, and how, how, how they keep a straight face when they talk about this stuff, I do not know. And she goes on to say, and you want to change the world because of that. So she, she so basically, I think she asks the kids if they struggle with their mental health. And they're probably sitting there going, we have no clue what you're talking about. And then she says, and you, and you want to change the world because of that. Well, in all my uh, nearly 20 years of doing this job, I can honestly say I have never spoken to someone who struggles with their mental health and heard them say, well, I want to take over the world and I want to change the world. Because in that moment, what they're more concerned about is themselves and what is going on for them. Everything, and I mean literally everything Megan says, is about her. But she does it in such a way that she uses other people to introduce something that is going on for her. This is what she wants. She wants to take over the world. She wants power. And I tell you this now. And this is why she is doing what she's doing. She then goes on. Keep. Then she goes on to say, um, keep that inside. Then take that pain and experience, twist it turn it into something beautiful so you've got harry who's going it's okay to talk about it there's no shame in that and he's right there isn't but talking to them like they're idiots um and then you've got megan going keep no keep it inside keep it inside and then twist it and turn it into something beautiful 
And again, that is about her. How can, firstly, how confusing. They're probably sitting there going, do we talk about it? Do we keep it inside? Don't really know what's going on here. You don't twist it and turn it. You work on it. Now, what I might say to clients is creating new memories. So what you want to do, then you create, you take something that has happened to you and you work through that and you heal from it. And then you start to recreate new memories that are lovely memories to then override other mem the, 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 the painful memories. But you have to work on that first. You don't just keep it inside and then go, oh, I'll turn that into some. But again, it's then there's no doing. There's yes, this is what this is. This is it. This is what you must do. And you must listen to me. And that's it. So how, how would you go about doing that, Megan? How would you go about keeping that inside, which is one of the most unhealthy things I've heard anyone say, because you absolutely should not keep it inside. People do. But health for, for healing absolutely not but how do you go and twist it and turn it into something beautiful so what I would say is this is Megan going I've taken what's happened to me and I've turned it into something beautiful oh give me five minutes with that woman I tell you now and then she says I'm not going to let that happen to anyone else how are you going to do that then how are you going to stop someone from feeling what they feel and experiencing what they experience were you were you worried about that when the bark people have gone through their experience where were you trying to stop that or going in and making sure that doesn't happen anymore so these women are not that haven't got that have gone through what they you know that that stops where, where, where where's that no nothing no with that because they don't matter there's there's no there's no there's nothing we can gain from that um so we, we're not going to do that and i've also heard that the children in sensible are apparently starting to feel a bit let down by harry so where's where's the continuation of that and the young girl that harry promised to help um i believe in africa where's where's that where's that so they partnered with a charity called Genesca. Uh, to help make mental health services more available to school kids. Well, that's all well and good. And they've partnered with Merchiwell. Well, mm, Merchiwell's just kind of <laughs> just been investigated or basically been, you know, that's all going on. So mm, that's not looking good, is it? But let's, you know, let's let's look at that. They partnered with them before and they wanted, they promised to provide sanitary products and education for young girls. Only 2,000 had access to that. What about the rest? Do they not matter? You know, instead of bunny hopping to different things, how about take one and stick with it and work with that instead of, yeah, well, we just, we've done a little bit there, so now we need to go on to something else. And that's all they do. They, they do a little bit and then move on to the next. Well, we, we've done our token bit now. We don't need to do any more than that. And that's exactly what they're going to do with Nigeria. They they are a con, in my opinion. They are they are a con. And the fact that this is being allowed to happen in real time and we're seeing this happen is disgusting, in my opinion. These two, they're con artists. And again, the royal family need to distance themselves from that because they are moving in political arenas, which the royal family are not supposed to be doing, because whether or not they are not working rules anymore, they are still in association with the royal family because they're still using the titles, which angers me so much because they can't even, she can't even be bothered to come into the country without hiding in the airport. So like I say, how is she going to stop that from happening? When you go through something, you must heal from that. And that is where you get your strength from. Not someone taking that away from you. That's your strength right there is knowing that you have gone through something and you have worked on that, worked through it, healed from it, 
fought back and come out the other side. That is where your strength comes from. What they should be doing is using their money to bring in experts, experts that understand how to talk to children and work with children, and also that are experts in mental health issues. But instead, because they're so egotistical, they believe they can do everything themselves and everyone has to listen. And the worst thing is, is the mainstream media sit back and say nothing to change it. While people like us are here shouting from the rooftops going, hello, what is going on? I absolutely think there is an agenda. And what's confirmed that for me is what has come out about Merchywell. And I'm actually gonna do a second video on that because I've realized I've been talking for 45 minutes ranting. And so if I start talking about that, then it's, yeah, we're gonna be over an hour and no one wants to listen to me for over an hour. Um, so I'm gonna do, finish this video. And then I think for the weekend, I'm gonna be talking about the charity scandal because that to me, I absolutely believe that is showing that there is something very, very underhand going on. And in a way they've played their hand and I, and I will explain that. So make sure you subscribe to my channel to make sure that you don't miss that video. Um, so I will wrap this up by saying one of the other things that I found hilarious was there were, well, there were two things. One, Harry seemed to be quite aggressive with this, uh, with a person. I think it was a child when a child was saying about they were five and Harry kind of goes, what, you're five? Um, oh, oh, my son's five. Um, or our son's five. Uh, sorry, he said our. Um, and then literally turns away. And and I just think, when you're talking, to, say if you were talking about your child that you're supposed to love and who's supposed to, you know, is around, um, why would you not kind of, you know, why would you not sort of talk more softly? I mean, to me, it just shows that when Harry wants to be on the camera, he acts like he's this great person around kids. But when he's not, it's just like, yeah, I'm not interested. And I'll put the clip up here so you can see that now. Yeah, so Megan, so Megan says... We all have our, uh, uh, honestly, this, <laughs> every time this woman speaks, it is literally like she's reading from a Barbara Cartland novel. She can't talk normally. She's, she's, she's so weird in the way she speaks. We all have our story and there's no shame in any single one of, our, uh, of your stories. Well, who said there was shame? Where's, where's the shame thing coming on? It's like, again, this is about themselves. Even on the hardest days or darkest days, everything is a pillar of your strength by each of you being here. Get me the sick bucket. Your teachers see that in you. And we see that in you. And interestingly, so is our daughter, Lily. And if you've noticed, they have to interject their children as well. Because it's almost like, oh, I'm just reminding you that we've got kids. Um, even though we're never with them, you never see them. But we're just reminding you. So she goes on to say, she's much, much tinier than you guys. Well, no, not really. Well, really, she's two. So yeah, or, you know, or nearly three, whatever. Um, she's about to turn three. And a few weeks ago, she looked at me and she would just see the reflection in my eyes. <laughs> and she said, Mama, I see me and you. Megan recalled adding that her daughter was speaking literally. But I hung on to these words in a very different way. And I thought, yes, I do see me in you, and you see me in you, and I see myself in you, and you in me, and me in you, and in you, and in you, and in you. <laughs> but as I look around this room, I see myself in all of you as well. Do you? Were you looking that close? Oh, please do me a favour. So you've got a, a nearly three-year-old articulating. Um, Mama, I see me in you. Again, I call BS. This is Megan interjecting the fact that she has got a daughter, which I don't believe she has, and that the child looks like her, which doesn't because she, she's not they're hers but 
I don't rec I don't think a, a child, a th nearly three year old, would articulate it in that way. If they were staring at themselves, they at in their mum, what they would more than likely say is, "Mum, how comes I can see me in your eyes?" or something along those lines, um, or, "Oh, that's funny, I can see myself." Hey, I'm probably more of an American twang. Um, they what they don't do is go, "Mama." I see me in you. <laughs> or what? She probably does poker in the eyes. <laughs> These two were not representing the UK. Basically, they were flaunting this. They were they were enjoying being fawned all over. And in all honesty, when you look at the real footage, not the media footage, it was a very small affair. There were hardly any, there was hardly anyone there. There, there were empty seats, empty tables, um, and it was just a farce. Uh, they had to stand for the national anthem. Aside from the fact that they were introduced as HRH, they had to stand for the national anthem. And their faces, it's, it, I, it, I don't feel it was Duper's delight with her. It was almost like, I'm smiling for the camera and uh, I'm not going to let anyone see that that this and and then and I understand that there was outrage. Harry looked incredibly uncomfortable, um, and they didn't sing, so again disrespectful. But um, the fact is, that's just a reminder to Harry and Meghan that that is something they are never going to be. So I like to let's twist and turn it, as Meghan says. So rather than see that as uh, a bad, the negative thing, I'm going to say by them listening to that. It was a stark reminder that this is what you will never, ever have. No matter how much you try, you are never going to be king. You are never going to be queen. And you are never going to be loved in the way the royal family are loved. You are never going to have an anthem after you. So there, let that be a reminder to you when you're standing there. Um, so on that note... I'm going to end this video. So I do apologise, almost an hour long. Um, but anyway, so if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. If you would like to subscribe and you haven't already and you do not want to miss future uploads, because I have some great things in store on this channel. Um, one of them might be coming next week. A bit of a surprise for you all. I'm very excited if it pans out, but we'll see. Um, not going to give anything away until it's done, but I just want to say that. Um, so make sure you subscribe so you do not miss future uploads. If you would like to treat me to a cuppa because you want to support what I do here in also giving free therapy to people who struggle financially, the link is in the description box below and it's also above the subscribe button. You can become a member. You can also join me on other channels. If you would like to send me something, write to me. I have a PO box in the description box of my videos. You can buy my bubble merchandise and thank you to all of you who are going across and buying a bubble mug or whatever it is that you're buying. Thank you so much. Um, you can join me on my other platforms, Instagram, Rumble, TikTok. Um, and I'm also on Substack, but I haven't really done a lot over there yet because I'm still finding my feet with that with that platform. Um, so go across and join me there. If you want the links to all of those, they are all in my description box. You just click on more. Uh, on the video and it takes you to the description box and all the links are there. If you want the addresses to the royal family, I've also got those in there as well. So if you want to write your indignation to King Charles and Queen Camilla, um, you can write to them there. So yeah, that being said, as always, um, I'll see you in the next video, which will be, I would be doing an extra one, uh, part two, not part two, uh, well, yeah, I suppose part two on the weekends. Um, but as always, I love you. I appreciate you. But most of all, I respect you. Take care. Bye bye. Mwah.